Well, hello, good people. Welcome to Talent Talk. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to Talent Talk second episode and I'm with I will be your host for today. So I'm so excited that in this episode is quite special because um, we have a very special guest to share about the experience and becoming overseas diaspora who gives a huge contribution to the nation. Please welcome Pak Karisma from USA. Hi Pak. <laughs> hi Pak. Hello. Hi Rita. Hi, 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 hi talent people. How are you Pak? How are you Pak? I'm good, thanks. How are you? How's everything good, there? Thank you. So, um, but before we continue, I would like to share about Pak Karisma's short profile. So, here we go. Karisma, or we call him Pakaka, is the CEO of Telin USA. He has joined Telkom Indonesia since 1997. He was once appointed as CMO of Telkom Australia, now Telin Australia, but then returned to Indonesia. Pak Karisma became Vice President of Data Sales, then changed to Carrier Enterprise Sales VP at Talent for approximately three years. And since 2019, he has been appointed as Talent USA CEO. Talent USA was established on December 2013, located in Los Angeles, and become subsidiary with 100% of its shares owned by Talent. He has wide range of experience professionally in ICT, cloud connectivity, and BPO verticals, but especially in marketing and strategy key account management activities to achieve corporate sustainability growth. So without further ado, let's have some chat with Pak Harisma. So Pa, what are we going to do today? It's just, um, all you need to do is just sit back, relax, and answer all my questions. <laughs> don't, be, don't be so tense, Pak. Smile. Uh, how do you know that I'm tense? I can see it from the look of your face, you know. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, my my nose. Yeah, your nose a bit <laughs> red. <laughs> so, uh, okay. This is the sunburn, not. <laughs> oh, is that the sunburn because you yeah. spend a lot of time in Malibu. A lot of time in the beach. Yeah, I see. I can yeah. see. Yes. And Santa Monica. <laughs> Santa Monica Beach. Yes. <laughs> okay, but can you share a bit of your story in becoming Italian USA CEO? Um. Well, I, I don't, I'm not sure what story that you expect to hear uh, of me becoming the Tallinn, uh, Tallinn uh, Australia, uh, sorry, Tallinn USA CEO. So I'm not sure what story that you wanted to hear about me becoming the Tallinn USA CEO at the first place. Uh, but Tallinn uh, USA uh, is actually a special case in Tallinn Global. Uh, we set up this uh, company to become our representation uh, and also getting license in, uh, in, in the country, in the United States. And uh, the reason I uh, was interested to become the CEO of Intelin USA at that time because of the challenge that will be given at that time. Uh, so not only I will be managing the company, uh, our company here in the US, but also I will still managing our uh, sales team in Jakarta and um, the responsibility actually also wider. Uh, that's why I, I, I um, accepted the challenge to manage the company and also be responsible, not only for the America's business of Thailand, but also in the Europe, Middle East and Africa. That's probably the main story behind uh, why I uh, accepted this challenge in the US. Accepted the challenge. Mm. Okay. Um, okay, but how about telling USA business? We're interested mm. to know more about telling USA, its business, its team, or any particular information that you could share, perhaps. Okay. Um, so telling uh, USA was established in 2015. Uh, at that time, uh, it was led by uh, Joseph, so our colleague, uh, and also at that time we had uh, Tony, Tony Adi. So the two uh, of them set up, established the business. Uh, starting at, uh, in the beginning that we prepare on the uh, project of CUS cable, subsea cable, and also end up now in Tallinn USA, we practically are a small version of Tallinn Indonesia. 
Uh, what, are, what I mean that uh, the Talent USA is the small version of Talent uh, Indonesia is because the business that we are doing. Talent USA, we don't have any uh, own uh, portfolio to run. So our portfolio is basically uh, the one that run by Talent Indonesia, including there we had a wholesale voice and also uh, SMS business as well as the data connectivity. Uh, most of the data connectivity, we uh, take uh, advantage of all the inventory belong to Talin Indonesia and also Talin, uh, our other Talin Global, uh, such as Hong Kong and also Singapore. So, uh, simply say, what we are doing is as the same as what Talin Indonesia is doing. Only the scope now, we're trying to attack uh, the market in the uh, United States and as well as uh, later on, we will try to explore more from the Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Okay, what we can see is that you're running a pretty huge, huge business opportunity up there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I, <laughs> don't, don't forget also, uh, when we, we still, when we set up the business in 2015, there were two of us. Uh, and until now, 2020, still, <laughs> still two we of have us. two of us <laughs> in the US. Two of us ever but, yeah, but the difference is that uh, as I'm now have a, having a, a team of sales, small team of sales sitting in Jakarta. But later on, uh, the idea for US and in the future is that we wanted to grow the business here and also as well that we wanted to um, recruit more of the team. So I'm still looking for the number three and the number four and so on and so forth. Okay, that's great to hear. Okay, but what about the challenge part? I mean, what are the challenges in running business, um, in running business as well as blending with the local people in the US? Mm -hmm. uh, well, in terms of the running the business here in the US, I don't think there are any difference than the others. Um, uh, same challenges that uh, we're facing in the other countries, which is usually comes up with the reg uh, regular, sorry, the re regulations. Uh, how we deal with the local regulation, how we deal with the labor uh, law, how we deal with the finance uh, accounting system here, uh, the taxation, uh, that's, that's, those sort of things that uh, become the standard practice every time we set up a business overseas. When I was uh, in, in Australia, I dealt with the very strict regulation uh, related with the employment. So at, the, at that time in Australia, the labor uh, union is, was very strong. So they practically, practically uh, uh, suppress or, or probably put the pressure to the government to uh, ensure that everyone in Australia uh, have, uh, can be treated equally in terms of the job opportunities. It's not that much different in the US. Uh, the difference might be on the labor side is that uh, here we're pretty much casual, so uh, which means that uh, uh, the, the, employee, the employee here in, in the US, they have to be treated equal. We cannot uh, treat uh, employee based on the gender, based on the age, based on the r race or religion. So this is the same uh, practice as we had in, in Australia. But moreover, in, in US, it's more casual in the, in the terms of the, the employee itself. They can always leave the company anytime they like. Uh, and uh, they, they just give a, a notice period, enough notice period for, to, the, to the employer to deal with, uh, with the replacement. So the, and vice versa, uh, the company can always uh, also uh, and uh, or terminate uh, an uh, unemployment terms with certain employee uh, with uh, enough uh, notice period. And uh, US is especially in California. Um, California is more like blended between the or influenced by the Latin America or even Mexico. Uh, Spanish language is quite common here. Uh, every Everywhere you will find a, a bilingual uh, guidance written in English and also in Spanish. So the more that, or the longer you'll be here, probably you can improve your Spanish as well. <laughs> Nada or something like that. Uh, so, um, and also uh, I think uh, coming to the United States also uh, will give more exposure uh, 
to deal with uh, people, uh, uh, multiracial, uh, multiracial, multinational uh, people in, in the US, especially in California, because uh, we also having uh, um, quite a big number of Asian people, not to mention Indonesian as well. So it's, it's interesting to deal with it, but it's not really a big challenge, I think, for anyone in Thailand if they, they have that uh, capability or if they can bring themselves to adopt with the new culture here. That's great to hear about. Well, um, how about the difference in, in terms of customers, yeah, but, um, mm -hmm. what is exactly the biggest difference in handling customers and business <laughs> during your time here in Indonesia uh, compared to your time there in the US? Is there any major differences? Yeah, um, it's a good question. Actually, um, the message or the purpose of Tallinn uh, is to, one of them is to um, help or support uh, anyone, any businesses wanted to expand their digital initiative in Asia which means that we leverage our strength position in Asia and try to offer this to um, America's market, uh, put uh, simply that way. Uh, we also have a leverage uh, from our own subscribers or big eyeballs in Indonesia. 250 million subscribers in Indonesia is one of the biggest in the Southeast Asia. And that has become our also uh, key or unique uh, proposition to, be, to offer to the market. So when we talk, when we, when I was still in the in Indonesia, dealing mostly probably with uh, Asian people uh, living in Singapore, Hong Kong, they know quite well about Indonesia. They pretty much have a uh, have a good knowledge about Singapore, Hong Kong, or even Malaysia. So they know where about uh, the location, the 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 main locations related to the telecommunication industry in the region. But when you talk uh, to, uh, to certain customers in, here in the um, in, uh, United States, not all of them uh, have that extensive knowledge about the region. So uh, what we have to do is that we have to explain more. So they will come always to us uh, to, deal, to have a one deal close. We might have probably hundreds of back and forth communications asking from a simple thing of uh, where the uh, end location in Singapore, more and uh, furthermore to the more difficult or complex situation like uh, where in the global switch uh, floor that you are, you are located and, uh, and how you connect from your equipment to uh, the, the, our equipment in the uh, certain floor in the global switch or even like where is the entity DC Serangoon data center in, in Singapore? How they connect well with the global switch or the main uh, data centers in Singapore? So those sort of questions that we need always to ed educate uh, the market. Uh, and also uh, some, sometimes uh, the questions, especially if we're dealing with the US government uh, requirements, the requirements or the specification can be very thorough. The documentation is very, can be very thorough. This is. Uh, one of the challenges that we have uh, that we need to get our team in Jakarta learn about the specifications and uh, what can be tweaked from our own uh, standard uh, service or SLA, uh, for instance. So I think, uh, yeah, that, that covers uh, mostly what the difference between the customer here and uh, those that we're dealing in Asia. Okay, Pat. That is very, very long and well explained answer <laughs> it's too long no. <laughs> no it's not too long it's okay but talking about digital capabilities what okay. is the most important capability that we need to have or to prepare in order to win this international business competition in your opinion Pat? yeah so um in the digital capabilities i think the one that we need to strengthen is the uh, the first is the people so we need uh, everyone that uh, probably tech savvy enough, dealing with all the digital features, how to do this kind of like conversation, how we uh, utilize all the technology uh, in order for us to uh, speed up our response. Uh, also because we are now uh, working uh, remotely uh, or I have to manage our team uh, sitting in Jakarta. So, uh, uh, we really need to understand how to optimize what, what we already have 
uh, for instance, like how we utilize the Salesforce applications, mm -hmm. how we can do this for coaching our, our team, how we can improve our response to our customers um, uh, in the email. Uh, those are the sort of things that uh, we need to be uh, savvy enough uh, to utilize. Um, from uh, which is uh, basically uh, the people have to, which is, uh, to have that capabilities. But moreover, as an organization, we also need to improve more, especially to increase uh, or to improve the customer experience, uh, how the customer can get the price quickly. Um, so for instance, I need an, uh, a capacity from LA to Jakarta. I need it in, in one gig level or 10 gig level, how we can end up or uh, refer back with the price fairly quickly. So because uh, this is, um, uh, they, they would expect us to come back, especially if we already say that we are strong in Asia, we need to be able to prove that we are strong. And one proof is that if we can offer or refer back to them with the pricing, like less than three business days, so that's one thing. And also uh, other digital capabilities that the company must have or talent must have also how to optimize, or how, sorry, how to automate uh, the process when the customer would like to upgrade, have an upgrade uh, capacity or downgrade uh, capacity at a certain time of periods, how they can do it in a, in a matter of seconds or even in, or, or probably hours. So those sort of things that... Uh, we need to uh, have uh, as an organization in, in Tallinn. And lastly, as a, as a digital company that what we want to claim, uh, we definitely have to utilize all the cloud-based applications. So this is the, the, the features or the capabilities that uh, we need to look at, both from the people and also from the organization point of view. Well, I'm pretty sure you are enjoying most of the time being there. <laughs> yeah. Even I'm though you're away from home, <laughs> even though you're so far away from home, yeah, but yeah, I'm trying yeah. to. <laughs> okay, so I'm curious to know what's the most fun thing to do handling business in the U.S., especially during a di difficult time like this. Mm. How are you cope up with the working from home situation, Pak? Uh, yeah, well, thankfully we are in California. Um, when the pandemic started back in March. California is actually the first case in the U.S., in the country. So at that time, we had this one case uh, from, um, uh, uh, I remember it was from uh, one person coming, just came back from China. And uh, she, uh, she got uh, or contracted with the virus at that time. And so then become isolated. In the beginning, California uh, managed to uh, keep the number low. Uh, trying to contain everything, every new case, they try to isolate, try to identify uh, uh, the spread, uh, who they, they've been dealing with. So this is, uh, I think I, I, I'm quite grateful that uh, California did it better than uh, New York, for instance, because New York straight from the beginning after a couple of months uh, started in California, suddenly New York became the, one of the epicentrum in the country. Um, but now uh, we are in the uh, seventh month of the pandemic situation. California is the highest uh, now has the has the highest case in the country. But uh, this is also more uh, because of the some uh, previous events like the George Floyd events, uh, the uh, which led to a spread uh, a surge of the number of the cases. At the time. And now being the most populated states in the country. So it is actually um, um, uh, understandable if California now become the highest uh, uh, COVID, uh, have the highest COVID cases in, uh, in the country. Uh, but having said that, uh, I also see that uh, because I live in, in the area in the Pasadena where the people here is quite well educated and they, they, they can um, follow the guidelines pretty well. So we keep the distance we, uh, so, and also protect ourselves with the mask or even the face mask. Some people would, would use the face mask. Um, and uh, so the spread is not that bad in, in, in Pasadena. And now recently we can see that the new cases now becomes flat. 
uh, in, in California. And now we start also um, uh, have an offline meeting. I mean, I, I, I already started like meeting uh, with some partners still with uh, physical distancing, following up all the guidelines for the health guidelines. And we start already starting doing that. So the fun thing, uh, if you're asking about what's the fun thing doing business here, so I think uh, I don't see any difference than we have done in Indonesia. We still uh, do it a uh, pretty casual way. We meet people not only in their, their offices, we also can have uh, uh, probably coffee, uh, although probably the coffee is not as good as in, in Indonesia, in, in Jakarta, but yeah. Uh, I manage to find some uh, good coffee spots, so then uh, we can we can have this conversation pretty as well. Um, other than that, I think uh, California is not really uh, blessed with a good scenery, if I may say. We only have beaches here, but uh, the beach itself quite uh, fun to watch, <laughs> to look at with all the people there. Better than uh, yeah. Better than <laughs> Yeah, better than Sydney. Uh, yeah, but it's still is 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 quite enjoyable. Uh, some enjoyable uh, locations, but uh, sometimes uh, me and my family, or with my son, we also went to like a Bay Area to San Francisco just to uh, get a different uh, feelings of the states. Probably later on, I will uh, once the pandemic over, I will try also to explore more from the. Midwestern or or from the eastern coast eastern coast of the uh, United States, uh, see how we're dealing with uh, probably Washington D.C. or uh, the business people in the New York. So this is this probably uh, would be also fun to look at. Okay. okay. Well, actually, I have some extra questions for you. <laughs> okay. Extra, so you, you, you pay me extra. Right? Oh, yeah. That's all. That's all of the scripted questions that I needed you to okay. answer. But there are oh, two it's a more. surprise questions. <laughs> okay, the first one. Um, what are the most things that you miss from Indonesia? Is it the food, the, the people, your tea, maybe, or your boss? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's tough questions. I, I will say uh, the team, but I will also say the food. <laughs> okay, why? So, yeah, uh, well, I miss the uh, engagement, the direct engagement that we had in, in, in Jakarta, uh, not only from the sales team, also from the marketing team, or even from the, our supporting uh, system in sales enabler, uh, partnership sourcing, uh, how we uh, miss also the fight we had with, uh, let's say, with the uh, product management um, in order to get a better price uh, uh, compared to the market. So those of engagement that I kind of like miss now, missing now. Uh, it's not always uh, easy for us to have this conversation over the video conference. Uh, yeah, some I think I think the experience using the video conference uh, reducing a little bit about, uh, the the fun thing of dealing uh, with people directly. And another thing, this is similar with all of you uh, doing the working from home in Jakarta. And also I have to say the food, uh, because those uh, cannot uh, be avoided. <laughs> if you are stationed in overseas, it will be difficult for you to find um, Indonesian cuisines like we have in Indonesia. We have Indonesian cuisine here, but the taste is not as good as uh, we have. So I miss Nasi Padang as well. <laughs> nasi Padang. <laughs> Hopefully, there will be Nasi Padang soon in the US, eh, Pak? Oh, they already have. Well, they already have it, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, yeah, but the meat is too good. Oh. So. <laughs> Which you still can go to Panda Express afterwards. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I think I think it's a good point. Or Chipotle. <laughs> Chipotle. <laughs> Chipotle. Yeah. Well, I wish we have more time to ask more questions. Mm -hmm. um, but it's time to wrap up our top session right now, Pat. So thank you so much, Pat Harisma, for your yeah. time. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks a lot, uh, Vita. And also say my, send my regrets to everyone there in Kalin, Jakarta. Hope we can see you guys again. <laughs> it's been a long time for me because the last time I was in Jakarta was early this year for the sales kickoff. And <laughs> I mean, it was a yeah, that's a, this was a, so I've been here uh, too long, I think. So uh, hopefully things could get better 
and then we can uh, all see each other also in a, in a better situation uh, directly, not only from the, this uh, video call. Yeah, thank you, Ita. Please stay safe and take care of us. Hope to yeah, see stay you safe to you too. Bye. <laughs> and to all great people, we hope you enjoy our talk. So um, I'm your host, Rita. See you on the next episode. Stay tuned on Telling Talks, connecting the ideas. Have a great day, great people. Bye.